Hello there, I'm Josh from the File Heaven and this is Marie. Together we are going to present you High End Munich 2023. First we entered the stereo side of the building. We actually wanted to visit the headphones slash earphone part, the portable part, the world of headphones, but we started with some old friends, namely Audio Analog. Those are a great company who have created the AA DAC and they have many more products in their current lineup. They have those big amplifiers, also more ducts, more power conditioners, I think, CD players, and even stereo amplifiers, which look really nice in person. Analog Audio is a company that we'll hopefully be reviewing in the future too. So we are hoping that we will get to review more products from them because the AA DAC has been one of my favorite DACs ever created. It was quite beautiful. Although back when I reviewed it, I wasn't filming in the same quality as we are now. So Marie can tell you more about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the fact that they are Italian makes it much better. We will hopefully be reviewing more products from Analog Audio in the near future. We are really looking forward to some of their better amplifiers. The AA DAC is still a central piece that I test almost every single other component against. They also had some beautiful speakers. Although at the moment we arrived there, they were not turned on, so we are not very sure how they sound, but they look like they are quite interesting. Afterwards, we progressed into exploring the world of high in Munich, and Marie actually made some friends, the guys at Ultrason. I actually reviewed a few Ultrason headphones in the past, but they changed their entire personnel a few times, so we kind of lost contact, but Marie made sure that she made friends there. Yeah, the they, they were my favorite uh, gang. From there. They were really united as a team, that much is for sure. And they had a lot of trust in their products. They have those Ultrason headphones that have the S-Logic technology, which is basically a technology that helps the sound reflect from the back of the driver into the ear cup and then back into your ear. This creates a very wide sound stage and the feeling of sound stage really well, although it can have the side effect of making the sound a bit bright. So it depends a lot on whom it works for and whom it doesn't work for. We are looking forward to reviewing more products from Ultrason as well. They have a lot of high-end headphones that we want to share with you, that we want to let you know about. We actually liked the interaction with Ultrason so much that even uh, after the show ended, we went there again and Mari took a few extra photos of them and some extra B-rolls. So they appeared in both days in our schedule, to put it like that. Yeah. They are really friendly though. We are already working on a review on an Ultrason headphone. This would be that pair. It is the Signature Pure by Ultrason. I really like the construction quality and the comfort. They made the ear band softer, the ear pads softer, and they look really nice. They are also very sleek. They are Marie's pair of headphones, actually. It looks really cool in person. Not just in person. Even on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Next for art, we have the Erzetik with Mr. Erzetik with their Talia headphones that I just reviewed. They also had a few other super nice headphones. They had their new Carbid and they had a lot of headphone amplifiers. And man, does the man leave an impression? Mr. Erzetik actually takes all of the photos and the advertising work for his website himself. And the website looks really crisp, really good. I mean, I'm a fan of doing those uh, photo shoots in the nature. Talia is also super nice. It is like the only high-end on-ear pair of headphones that I know of. So it is interesting to see what a man with a vision can do. And his other headphones actually sound much better than the Thalia. That is like the, the most entry-level offer they have. The whole booth was very well arranged and I really liked listening to some of his headphones. Mr. Erzetik also includes and sells some CDs with music. For example, when reviewing the Erzetik Thalia, I didn't really have such an emphasis on the CDs, but he has some really nice CDs included for us, at least as reviewers. And I like that. I like a man who loves his music. It, it says a lot about what they think about this hobby. Also, I do think that the Erzetik headphones sound best with rock and metal. Most of them had a very dynamic, very vivid and very punchy presentation. The build quality is always super nice, but they make those by hand, so that is to be expected. I will hopefully be reviewing other high-end headphones from Erzetik in the near future, so please check out 
both our YouTube channel and our full written website for that. We also had a chance to speak with the distributors for Audes, Fostex and Bricasti in Germany and they were such nice people, I mean so nice. They had all of the Audes models in presentation, I actually did not stop to listen to them because I know how most of the Audes headphones sound like. I didn't even have time to stop to listen to Stone Fostex, although I'm really curious to be reviewing more Fostex headphones. Fostex is a really nice company if you're a bass head, at least their TH900 model is really known for its bass head properties. Also the Beercast is something that I have never heard. Very few were ever made into existence and the German dealership actually has one of the most rarest DAX Dash headphone amplifiers and they allowed everyone at high end to listen to them and that was really, really nice. The name of the shop is Mega Audio and they had so many models, like so many models. Our videos aren't quite so well balanced because we couldn't use the stabilizer for every single B-roll but we tried our best and I think that the digital stabilization worked okay, not perfect, but it's okay. You should be able to see most of the details without it looking like a bit of jelly. This is how stabilization usually looks. We also have the Fostex T50 RP, the model that is the base for most headphones in the world. Like most headphone companies actually start as a T50 RP headphone ripoff or not ripoff but mod. They usually start as a mod of that so that is the daddy of most headphones. I have reviewed the Deconi Blue which is based on that but Deconi is one of the OM makers for earpads for most companies. So we know that Deconi made a good job out of the T30 RP. We proceeded forward to be reviewing Astel and Kern. You can see a lot of flickering on your display and that is because Germany uses CFL lamps which produce flickering. That is something that we saw after we got home, so it is not quite fixable. I loved talking and working with Astel and Kern. They make probably the most popular audio players like they were the most frequently seen at high end. Most boots had uh, an Astel and Kern player powering their setup, except for Shenning, a few had Shenning, and then there was Astel and Kern. Those are really popular. They have the most stable overall operating system. Usually Astel and Kern doesn't fail you with nothing. It is usually rock solid. They also have some beautiful new players coming up. There is the Acro CA1000T that we reviewed, and then there is the new CP3000, and yeah, Astel and Kern was really nice to speak to. The company had a lot of employees taking care of everyone, allowing you to enjoy their players, but you could find their players on many other stands, so you didn't really have to stop by Astel and Kern to hear them. Their players were present even at Hyphiman Boots, at Felix Boots and many other companies because Astel and Kern players were used to power many of the headphones found in the world of headphones. There weren't many earphones like in-ear monitors but that is because that was a health concern. You can't really have many EMs presented at a show because many people will try them then the ear tips get switched between people and then they can lead to some like infections spreading from one to another. So it is important to keep in mind if you go to a convention all Always wash your hands as frequently as possible, also use some hand sanitizer and try to not use the tips that other people have used. Either bring some tips from back home or most companies do have like a big jar of tips that you could <laughs> use to test their EMs. So when there are EMs, usually companies are well prepared to deal with that and to make sure that you will be safe and sound. We also had a chance to have an interview with Shenling. We even had a full interview with them posted on YouTube. The company is really nice. They have a ton of really interesting products, even upcoming products. They have a very expensive pricey range of products in China where they sell much better and much more interesting products. While for Europe and for the rest of the world they only have players and the most expensive player I think is a few thousand euros while in China they even have CD players for diehard audiophiles that are much more pricey and much more interesting in terms of technology. Mr. Fran from Shining is quite friendly, the company is super open and one thing that I've learned is that they don't see the EMs as their main product. Their EMs are like an accessory to their players. So Shining players are the stuff you should be checking out. Although by this point we were quite tired, we then proceeded to check out Spirit Torino and Spirit has a lot of headphones, like the Spirit headphones are super nice. They have models that sound much better than the Super Leggera that I reviewed in the past, they also have 
a ton of headphones. I mean, I expected them to have just a few, but they have quite a few. They were always very well powered, so they don't consume a lot of power. This is an advantage to them. They even have a Bluetooth headphone, but it's not exactly a Bluetooth headphone. It is a headphone modded with an Ear Studio EES100, which I reviewed on Audiophile Heaven, and I liked it quite a lot. So they knew what's good, and they knew how to power their headphones. The Spirit Orino Super Legera that I reviewed is available there to listen to. It was available in red color, while I reviewed the blue color. It was a really nice experience. The people there are super friendly. The CEO actually made a lot of jokes with us and it made the whole stay very enjoyable. From what I understood, Spirit Torino will also be making more Bluetooth products. So you should be looking forward to us reviewing more of their products in the near future. I have enjoyed their headphones a lot. They aren't the lightest, so they don't usually focus on being lightweight, but they focus on producing a very pleasing sound and they are also handmade in Italy. So their headphones have like this super nice build quality. Around this point, the high end Munich center closed down and we couldn't take any more B-Rolls or do anything else because it was six o'clock. So the event starts at 10 a.m. and closes down at 6 p.m. That's exactly eight hours in which you can listen or work if you are a reviewer. For example, we came there to work. We had to work a lot. We had to take interviews and everything took quite a while. So while you are seeing about five to 10 minutes of video, that took us the entire day and another two to three weeks of processing, which is pretty fun to work on. But you should keep that in mind if you are coming as a consumer and if you want to listen to as many products as possible, it would be a good idea to have a plan. It would be good to know what you are coming to listen, where you will find it and how to get there. It is important to know all of those things because otherwise you may reach the high in Munich event and you may be unable to listen to anything because there is so much stuff that you will want to explore. And trust me, when you get there, you will understand that there is something for everyone. There are so many stereo systems that I wanted to listen to and that we stopped to enjoy. But the time went on so fast, especially since in the first day we arrived quite a bit late. 1 p.m., which was already quite late, and we only had like five hours to work. So yeah, go early. Be prepared and know what you are looking for. This would be my advice after the first day of Hein Munich. We went home extremely tired, but we are prepared to do an even better work the following day. Day four of uh, staying in Germany, going to Hein Munich. Day two of Hein Munich. Day two of Hein Munich. We had Oof. quite a bit of a trouble getting here. Yeah, they go and strike the German people. Yeah. The road of Hain Munich actually looks pretty cool. This is the road you take from the metro station. Of course, the second day started once again with Ultrason. And while I stopped by the Moondrop and the SMS Sal and Xduo company, Mari went to her friends at Ultrason. <laughs> and took some photos and b-rolls of them. They are so happy with their products and I am really enjoying seeing people having fun. This is the whole point. You are supposed to have fun when you create something for entertainment. Headphones are made for you to be happy with, to, for you to enjoy music. They aren't made for you to stress out what is the best and such. I mean, there are headphones that sound really nice, but it is important to keep in mind that this is a hobby and it is meant for you to have fun. Artis Nova has a really nice selection of amplifiers and I think ducks. We didn't stop to check out too much about the technical specification because we were a bit in a rush, but we really enjoyed seeing their products. They were all about looking artistic, having a very full art design, very nice build quality actually, and they look like they are made by hand. The entire product selection is quite unique, I would say. So if you are looking for something that is different from the rest, Artis Nova is worth checking out. Tessiture or Tessiture, I think you would call it that way, is a company from France and they make one speaker so far, but they are a startup company. So there was this entire area with startup companies. Tessiture was one of those companies. If you want to check out upcoming products and such, you can check out that area in high end. Usually it had some pretty interesting products, I would say. This one speaker looked really nice. The fact that we didn't have enough time to check out every single booth that we were interested in was quite sad because sometimes I was able to speak with some booths and such, but we couldn't take bureaus because Mari was already quite tired. So this was the case with CPL where I managed to speak with the people and I managed to learn a bit about their products, but Mari wasn't able to take any more videos. She had to rest. She had to spend some time distressing basically because the job can be quite stressful for a video artist. We also worked so much like the entire 
space is so big. For example, if you are planning to purchase a pair of headphones or a pair of speakers that cost like 50,000 euros or more, you are likely going to a show to listen to them before purchasing. It's like the show is an investment necessary for you to be able to purchase that product eventually. And we had this experience at the first level. So if you are considering coming to high in Munich, I would suggest checking the floor level first. That is where most affordable products are like below 5,000 euros. Everything at the first level is going to be considerably above 5,000 euros. And then there is another level upwards, which is where even pricier products are, but there, there are a lot of conference rooms where people talk and make deals. And that is a big point about high in Munich. This is the place where many deals are made, where distributors come and talk with companies who may want to have their products with that distributor and such. So it is not an event only open for public. It is open for companies too. This is why the first two days are for traders. So for companies working, for example, for us reviewers and for anything business. And then the other two days are open for everyone. The point is that us reviewers should come in the first two days because it is more free. We don't have to bump into everyone and we can take B-rolls a bit more freely. In the last two days, it gets so crowded that taking videos is much, much more complicated. <laughs> Even like this, it was quite crowded. We managed to take an interview with Final Audio about their upcoming headphones, the X8000, which is a headphone that is supposed to be the lightest headphone in the entire world. That one I'm excited about. It is just 220 grams. Just imagine this. Imagine having a headphone that is so light and so comfortable. Actually, the comfort was interesting. It is a headphone that doesn't have ear pads. It was like a mesh that supported the headphone, but they weren't traditional ear pads. I liked learning about their products. I also am looking forward to be reviewing them. And also D8000, if we are lucky, enough to find a pair that we could review. I am really interested to listening to more of their products. There were so many people present at the final audio booth that it was almost impossible to get a hold of someone. So I am really happy that we managed to take that little interview. It is already posted on YouTube and you should be able to find it on our channel. Rose Hi-Fi should be no stranger to music lovers. They have those beautiful streamers and beautiful power amplifiers. They have some of the best built products and some of the best looking products out there. They weren't very talkative though, so I don't know if we got in touch with the right people. They really weren't talkative. But on the other hand, there were so many people already present there. And that is something that I am actually curious about because my understanding was that the first two days are just for trading, so for working. So I'm curious. There were so many people listening to their products. I think that even the dealers and the sellers are impressed by the quality or they are testing the quality before importing a certain products or carrying a certain brand. That is an interesting approach, I would say the least. Rose Hi-Fi makes some really nifty amplifiers, but there aren't many reviews available. So I would suggest checking them out at other shows as well. If you are interested in purchasing some Rose Hi-Fi products, even in Romania, they are a very rare product. And even though some shops do carry them theoretically, they don't have the products in store. It is a product that it can be ordered, but it is brought on order after a month of waiting and such. So it is a product that you should be checking out in person if possible. So check out a distributor that may have Rose Hi-Fi or at least try to attend a show where they are available. They make some pretty pricey products. So if you end up being able to listen to them, write a comment and let us know what you thought about the sound of Rose Hi-Fi. There was one room where some people were listening to a Rose Hi-Fi based setup, which sounded really nice, but I couldn't understand what speakers were used and what other components. As far as I know, Rose Hi-Fi doesn't make their own speakers. So that is something to clarify before making any assumptions about the final sound of the Rose Hi-Fi products themselves. We also visited Le Chouer or Le Chur. They were initially called Chouer, but it sounded too much like sure and from what I understand, to avoid copyright infringement, they had to change the name to Let's Sure. They make Chai Fi EMs. We reviewed quite a few of them, even the D13, the Tape, the Tape Pro, and I liked all of them. But they have some special products too, like the Cadenza. As far as I know, the Cadenza is on its way to us. We should be able to review it soon and to share our thoughts and opinions about it. It is a flagship EM made by Let's Sure. So I'm really excited about learning more about their products 
because they were some of the most friendly companies in the show. There was also Hyphy Men, and I mean, you have to expect Hyphy Men to be super friendly. They were close friends, and actually Mr. Mark from Hyphy Men recommended me to check out Le Chouer because since I reviewed only Chai Fi EMs from Le Chouer, I didn't know that they had such a great staff and the people were so awesome and so friendly. We also had a lot of fun because Mari enjoyed the looks of their products a lot and yeah, it was super pleasing to be checking out the products from Le Chouer. Ral Requisite is a company that makes over the ear headphones and they actually have those ribbon based headphones. They have such an amazing sound. I wasn't expecting this. I just placed those headphones on my head for a very brief period because we were rushing and I wanted to talk with the people from Ral and men. I have to say this, the sound of those headphones is incredible. They aren't really a headphone, they're like an on-ear loudspeaker. They are placed on your head, but they just sing. And that is the open back version, like the one that is a loudspeaker. There are also traditional headphones that sound very good, the ones that you are seeing right now. But yeah, that's one. It, both of them impressed me a lot. Both of them sound really good. They have such an amazing detail and such a natural mid-range. They are super impressive. They were powered from pretty powerful amplifiers, so it will be interesting to review them. We should be reviewing them in the near future and we should be presenting to you what kind of sound you should be expecting from them and how hard they are to drive because I think they are quite hard to drive. I think that you will need quite a bit of power. The company is also extremely friendly and they are very happy about their products. The products are made like really nicely. They are some of the highest end of products. I was one of the biggest fans of how they look like. We also managed to visit Audio Technica, some old friends. I actually had a meeting with them in the past, even in Romania, when they had some business here. They are a nice company. They don't have a lot of headphones, though. They have a lot of like vinyl players and such. They are an interesting company to check out. You should stop by their booth. They allow you to listen to their products. We managed to get a glimpse of how they sound like, but they were quite busy. There were a lot of people interested in speaking with the guys at Audio Technica. So we only were able to like film and just listen very briefly to their headphones. They have new models incoming and that would be interesting to check out if we will be able to. For example, we have Avestor in Romania, which carries Audio Technica officially. Audel is a really interesting <laughs> brand. They make very artistic looking products. They use a lot of wood and a lot of craftsmanship. Like they really want to make art out of making headphones and amplifiers and such. Their products all look incredible in person. You could listen to very few of them because the setups were more for presentation and for you to check them out and how they look. But but that was an entire experience. Mari stopped by and wanted us to take Biros just because she enjoyed the aesthetics of the company so much. And I actually enjoyed it as well. From what I understand, that is one of the best selling points of the company. They are made for the looks. They are made for you to check out how beautiful the speakers can be. What an interesting design. They should sound very good. And hopefully we'll be checking out that as well in the near future on our channel and written website. For some of the products, the guys were busy, but I really enjoyed the looks of this one. It looks like a little guarna, we would call it in Romania. I think the name is Hort in English. It looked really nice, but as you can see, it was not connected to anything. So it was like an artistic piece. Also in the line of artistic pieces, we have those tiny speakers that are like suspended from a place higher up. They look really nice. It was an interesting approach to the design. The same company also makes those like, I don't even know what they are called. I don't know what to call them, but they look pretty cool. It looks like a cartoonish kind of product. It looks to be an amplifier with, I hope a duck, once custom sound is the name of the company. And they have like an interesting speaker built very artistically up top. Then we reached a company named Mr. J Audio Design. This is basically the Yava Hi-Fi. They are an interesting company with a good number of entry level or at least mid-range amplifiers. The price is really low though. So the point is that they are very good in price performance ratio. They have really interesting products. I will hopefully be reviewing some of them in the near future in about a month or so when they become more widely available. I liked the color a lot. Actually, this is what caught my attention. They look so nice in person. Like this is such a beautiful design 
design and the price was like really acceptable, like around a thousand dollars below it, even 500 US dollars, which is really acceptable for such a good looking product. They also have really friendly folks taking care of their company and they are generally really, really nice. So that is something to be looking for too, if they come to high end Munich again. The audio car part of the show is quite trippy. They have really large system for cars. You can get into the car and listen to how it would sound like. I think that the car audio guys would have a lot to say about this setup. I actually wanted to do a car setup for my car, but it is still in warranty and I can't really modify the car itself without losing the warranty. So at this point, at least I have to just listen to this kind of setups in cars. They sound really good, but you have to take into account that the car has to have phonic isolation so that you don't hear the noise from the road and then there is a lot more than just the audio system. Catches is a company that we worked with in the past. We have reviewed the Catches S3, which was a very popular review, so popular that I actually made two videos about the S3. They make really nifty amplifiers, ductless headphone amplifiers, even power converters, even a lot of stuff. The latest thing they are working on is a streamer, as far as I understood, and they are going to launch it pretty soon. So that is something to be looking forward to. They also have those beautiful, and I mean really beautiful and really powerful speaker amplifiers. They also have more more headphone amplifiers, more ducks. You can see a lot of wild stuff at catches. I like the fact that they aren't afraid to have power filtering and power conditioners right next to speaker amplifiers so they can offer something for everyone. They are popular in most of the world, so most people know about catches, but they aren't very widely available. So when you purchase a catches product, you usually have to locate a dealer, which can be a bit troublesome if your country doesn't have a large number of people interested in audio. Those guys are called Amphion. They have really colorful speakers and I when I say colorful I really mean it this time around they have a ton of white speakers colorful speakers the sound was very good at least in the conditions where we heard them at the show really interesting stuff even some pretty high-end looking speakers although the listening experience was quite limited because the show was quite noisy so as you have probably learned from my other two interviews that I posted the show can be quite noisy in the background so it is not the best place to judge the sound of a product. Lemon Audio is a really professional company so they are usually selling their products based on measurements and engineering and they have very capable engineers to design their products they also have a few extra premium products where you can purchase for a much better finish for a much better look but you don't have to purchase it the sound is pretty much the same as the one that has the basic design so it is interesting as a company they accept the fact that they can make something for those who want to invest in a good looking product without sacrificing the sound on their more affordable products. We will hopefully be reviewing some of their Daxless headphone amplifiers in the near future. And just like Meze Audio, Lemon Audio brought a high number of employees to take care of talking with people, of setting things up for them to listen to products. So it was an interesting experience, very complete I would say with Lemon Audio. Next up we had Xtonebox. This is a company that makes vintage looking products, but with a really sweet and organic sound. So it's not necessarily vintage, it is not rolled off at either end, but they look really good and they rely on having a very clear and very clean mid-range. We already confirmed that we are working on a review with them and it is an interesting thing to come. I think that this would be one of the first reviews we do on vinyl based setups. So we will have to also include more details about vinyl playing and what the experience with vinyl generally is. They have a good number of products including speakers, amplifiers, especially a ton of tube stuff with tube amplifiers, speaker amplifiers and of course vinyl players, vinyl pre-amplifiers and their amplifiers based on tubes look really clean, really well designed. I really enjoy the overall design they have. Where they really shine is in having a really continuous design for their entire line. When looking at their products you know that they went for the same language with every single product. We also managed to stop by Lab 12. This is one of the most popular audio companies in the entire world. It is actually shocking that we haven't reviewed anything from them yet. They are very popular everywhere. Like even in Romania, they are popular. People want to get one of their products and we'll hopefully be reviewing some products from them because I'm really looking forward to sharing with you my thoughts and feelings about the sound. The setups that were available at High in Munich weren't really listenable in the noise conditions. It was so noisy actually. That area was a very popular area. 
and Lab 12 being so popular, you can expect that there were a lot of people at all times there. They were listening, they were talking. So yeah, you know what we do at uh, this kind of event. They employ very high quality tech, very high quality manufacturer, craftsmanship. They have those beautiful, I mean, really beautiful stereo amplifiers, really beautiful ducts, and it all looks really cool and clean, you know? You really know when something is professionally made and you will see that they brought a ton of products with them. They even have cables and high quality cables, but as far as I know, they are most popular for their stereo amplifiers, which are like the cream de la cream for many people and many people use them and love their products. So it is interesting. The experience was very pleasing with their stuff. They are very open, very talkative and very friendly. They even helped us get around because at this point I actually got last. I was looking for a few more companies. This was towards the end of the show for us. Mari was already extremely tired. So I had to check them up to see who we didn't visit yet and who we should visit. Sadly, we were not able to stay for all four days. So we were only able to visit the first two days. We actually left on a rush because we just decided to go to Hain Munich at the recommendation of Mr. Fran from Shenling, and we are forever grateful for that. We weren't able to find enough accommodation to accommodate us because we had to either leave on the third day of Hain Munich and miss the last two days, or you would have had to have stayed even more, like four days more, because Wizzail, which we typically use, only flies like twice per week. At any rate, Lab 12, really cool company. Glass Acoustics Innovations. This is an interesting company. They make glass drivers. They're typically an OEM producers for drivers. So we stopped by because I really fancied the look of the drivers. And we found out that they do have some working prototypes. And we even entered the listening room <laughs> within the Glass Acoustics listening chamber. And they sound really nice. The dynamics and the impact was superb. Like, so nice. It was so impactful. It was a poof type of sound, really fast and really precise. Of course, it is a novelty product and you have to be an engineer to really appreciate the beauty of their products. So I won't be able to tell you whether they are worth their asking price or not at this point. But from what I've seen, their speakers aren't going to be ultra expensive. So they are going to be affordable for most people. Also, they look really cool. And if you are an engineer, if you want to design a pair of speakers, if you want to get into the audiophile world as a builder and as someone who makes products, they are really worth checking out. Their drivers made of glass look really cool. I don't know if it will be problematic to transport them, but that is something we'll find out in time. This area was combined for ZMF headphones and Felix Audio. From Felix Audio, you probably know a lot about their products because if you've been needing even a little of Audiophile Heaven, I've reviewed them and I love their products. But ZMF, those headphones surprised me. What also surprised me was the fact that the company is run by a couple. So they have the business of making headphones and they help each other. And it was really, really cool to see. I mean, we thought we are the only couple working in the Audiophile stuff because yeah, we went there as a couple, we help each other. But the guys at ZMF were really pleasing to work with, like really, really pleasing, really pleasing to speak with. They have those beautiful headphones and the sound was really, really good. They also are very comfortable. I didn't expect good comfort given the fact that they have like your typical design and I didn't have such a good comfort with Denon that has the similar ear cup size and ear cup design. But yeah, ZMF is super comfortable. While Felix Audio, yeah, you can probably expect more reviews about their products. Their amplifiers are super good. They have very neutral sound, very clean sound and very good driving power. And this is something I've noticed at high-end Munich. You couldn't really tell whether something has good detail and what the overall signature was, but you could immediately tell if it was driven well and distorting. And well, Felix Audio amplifiers, wherever they were, they were able to drive everything really well. So ZMF is also worth checking out. Their headphones are really, really good. With headphones, you can actually test them a bit more than you can with speakers. For speakers, the environment is so noisy and the room acoustics for every single speaker setup is so poor that you probably won't be able to tell too much. But with headphones, you just place them on your head, especially if they are close back, so you are going to tell a lot about the final sound. Of course, a big star of the show was Lotto and El Mion Lir upcoming DAP. It is some kind of digital audio player. They have like 
the largest dub I've seen to date, really heavy. The sound was so good in the driving power, in the dynamics and in the details. I also had the Ibeso DX320 Ti Max and I was able to compare them side by side, but the environment was so noisy that I couldn't tell all of the details apart. At any rate, Audio Next is the importer and distributor in Germany. They also carry Rosson, Burson and a few other companies that come from China and all over the world. Audio Next is really worth checking out. They have a very rich selection of products, especially if you are in Germany or German, you should check them out. Lotto Audio has this Mjolnir coming up, which is super good. This is going to be their top level player. There are only two in existence right now, so they only created two. And we are really looking forward to listening to them when they become available, to comparing them to Ibeso DX320 Ti Max and to all of the other players that we reviewed, even Astel and Kern Acro CA1000T. There is a lot of innovation that went into the Mjolnir. Like, it's so large, I don't even know how you are going to control it. It comes with a little leather bag, similar to what uh, mailmen usually use to carry. It's going to be an interesting experience, I'm sure of that. Most music lovers will desire to have the Lotomion Lear as their companion. When it comes to Rosson Audio, they make the smoothest, deepest and bassiest, warmest sounding headphones ever created. Their LED Zero is still the top bass head headphone that I've heard to date. It's so nice in the bass, so rich, so lush, and yet it has such a beautiful detail and clarity. Audio Next is really doing all of us a favor by carrying all of those products to Europe, allowing you to listen to them in Germany and making them available because otherwise you'd have to buy without listening and then you could be unhappy with the product even if it is a good product it could be different from your main taste so it is always good to listen before purchasing whenever possible i always try to emphasize on this try to listen before purchasing we also visited audio hungary a company from hungary they are also called qualiton qualiton they are hungarian but they sound quite french the Amplifiers they make are really nice. They have a ton of tubes. They actually told us that they decided to bring the tubes outside of the product. Usually the tubes were on the inside and that we have reviewed the APR204, which is a pre-amplifier and it was tube based. Now they have a ton of speaker amplifiers. Hopefully we'll be reviewing some of their amplifiers in the future so that you know how they sound. You could actually travel to Heil Munich, but I don't think any of their amplifiers was connected to any setup because they make the amplifiers, but they didn't have a ton of speakers on the site. You could at most look at them. The design is really, really super nice. They are based on a company that purchased a factory that used to make pro tools for musicians. So you can see the quality of the work they make. They also are using some kind of new finish to their products. You can order them in any color if you pre-order the product. So if you pay before delivering, you can order it in any color you want. It is possible to have a very scratch resistant kind of finish. It was really nice to the touch. The products are really large, really heavy and also have a super good sonic quality. I mean, if you've read my APR204 written review or if you watch the video review, it is one of the most natural, most organic sounding pre-amplifiers out there. So I can only imagine what a full speaker amplifier would do. We have the KLH Model 5, which you can still see in the back. So it would be interesting to see how Audio Hungary amplifiers compared to our current Cyrus OneCast streamer slash speaker amplifier that we are typically using. Weird. <laughs> Setup. One thing that I've noticed about Germany, especially when traveling outside of Munich, is that they have those like really large constructions on either side of the highway. So when the highway passes near a town, they have those acoustic filters, I would call them. So cars don't really make noise when passing by a nearby village. And this is something big because I have a friend in Ireland who always complains to me that he lives near a highway and the noise is unbearable. He can't even sleep some nights because the cars are very noisy when they pass by his house. So Germany thought about this and constructed those sonic isolation structures that isolate you from the noise. Next year, we are going to be better prepared. I hope that high-end society and Munich will have us once again. Also, you can help us travel by donating, by using our Amazon affiliate purchase links for when you are making purchases and by subscribing and liking this video so that other people can see it. We are really thankful for all of your help. The whole event was really pleasing. I am actually hoping to visit more events. I really do hope that the video has been enjoyable to watch. I hope you will consider subscribing to the file heaven and checking out other videos and check out the ending that 
I made <laughs> back there when after an entire day we were quite tired and after our second day the public transportation didn't work anymore and we had to borrow a car which was a good experience it was fun but at the same time it was a bit stressful I'm not gonna lie about that this moment we just finished high in Munich the sun is bright in the sky but so we finished high in Munich the sun is bright in the sky very fun experience very friendly people love the whole experience yeah we'll most likely come again next year if that will be possible i love it hope to see you here also next year now we'll go and get drunk we're going home we'll try to get drunk get some sleep and then catch the flight back home it's going to be hard next morning at 5 yeah. am yeah just look at her she's really enthusiastic about catching the flight at 5 am thank you so much bye bye